Okay, guys, welcome to Ticker Feed Channel. I really do appreciate you tuning in. As always, welcome to the family. So, what we're going to be discussing is going to be two different stocks, okay? And they, they truly are both under $5, okay? So, the first stock is going to be ticker symbol A B E O, Ab Abonoa Therapeutics. Yeah, so that's kind of a little hard to pronounce, so I'm just going to say A-B-E-O. And then the other stop is going to be Mario Biopharma, or M-R-E-O. Again, guys, welcome to the family. I really, really do appreciate being here. I'm super excited to talk about it. And always, I have this meme, and it says, when you see a big red candle two seconds after buying, that's what my face looks like no joke does it happen to you if it does comment below tell me what you think if you own either of the stocks comment below or if you're even thinking about it or maybe doing an option trade on it just let me know tell me what you think and at the end of the video as always comment below and uh, let me know what you think of the video as well really do appreciate it let's go ahead and get started Okay, so the question is, why do I care about those stocks? Why do I need to know about them? Okay, so here's a little backstory, and then we'll get straight to those stocks. So billionaire Ken Griffin pulls the trigger on these two penny stocks, okay? So a little bit of background with Ken Griffin. So he actually was one of the ones that basically started Citadel. So he is a hedge fund manager and he is the chief of investment firm Citadel okay now he turned this college trading from a PC in his dorm room into a multi-billion dollar market giant okay now everybody's familiar with a little bit of Citadel with Citadel and Robinhood with that situation before but with 2020 with the situation last year this company still brought in a net positive return of 1.7 percent or total revenue of 6.7 billion dollars so clearly they know what they're doing so let's go ahead and get dive in a little bit into ABEO okay so it is a clinical stage biopharma company focused on gene and cell therapy okay of course they say it's cutting edge using the latest genome technology to treat genetic diseases by inserting corrected copies of the DNA directly into the affected cells. So that's a little bit quick background of ABEO. Then I'm going to scroll down just a little bit and MREO, okay? And this is going to be the second stock. It also is another biopharma company with a focus on rare diseases, okay? So M REO has a large and diverse pipeline with six drug candidates in various stages of development. The company's research programs are looking at treatments for solid tumor cancers, ovarian cancer, and chronic obstructive pul pulmonary disease, among other severe conditions. So that's a quick little summary of both stocks, why I'm talking about it. So now let's, again, let's dive a little bit deeper. Okay, so now Griffin increased its stake in the company by 181% or 1.846 million shares in Q4, which is now worth $4 million, okay? Now, then we're looking, same thing in Q4 with the second stock, MREO, he put, picked up 4 million shares and now it's worth 16.3 million. So again, just a little bit of a background just so you can kind of understand what Citadel is doing. So if you want a little bit of a backing, if you're looking for long term or a push for an option call, this is something to know. Okay, So I wanted to pull up the chart for ABEO and I just kind of wanted to just take a look at it real quick. OK, and so as you can see, if you look at the real bodies, right, take a look at the wicks, right? Hi. I'm sorry high you got low it's dropping I mean just look take a look at the chart right so as you can see for example with the Q4 when Citadel bought this company or bought mil, uh, you know millions of shares into the company you can see 
just from the bearish and the bullish volumes, right? According to the history, you can take a look and see the changing in volume and then look at the real bodies, right? And so if you look at these candlestick overall analysis, right? You can see that in my own theory that it's going to only continue to gradually rise, right? And so I just wanted to point that out. And then I wanted to go ahead and type in the other company. So that's going to be M M R E O. Okay. Wow. A lot of volatility. But as you can see, again, it's a gradual rise, right? And that's what you want to see. Even if you were doing long-term trading or option trading, again, with the volume itself, you can see if I zoom in here, the volume continues to increase, then it decreases, and then you can tell sometimes the sellers are on top, sometimes the buyers are on top, but it's still gradual rise, and that's what you want to see if you are doing calls or if you're trying to do a long-term trade. So I wanted to point that out, that way you're kind of aware, again, just what's going on with these two stocks. So with both the companies, I want to point out that they are they have clinical trials going on. I was able to look at both websites and I was able to find out that they are going through, as you can see, different phases, you know, phase one, phase two. So you got first time drug is administered to the human, helps determine a safe dose, you know, identify adverse events. So they're going through that process, right? And so I wanted to look at both, you know, you've got osteo, uh, osteogenesis and perfecta so it's a clinical stage so it's going to be on bone disease right and so that's going to be for the other company and so they're both going through these stages right now which are going to be catalysts in the charts that's going to either bring it up or bring it down depending on if they get money continue to get money to perform these phases and if they're successful or if they patent it and so I wanted to kind of just explain that for both these companies because I feel like if you're again if you're looking at it at a long term you know the human body is not perfect and so you're always going to need to do preventative maintenance on it or if it doesn't work you're gonna have to change it or fix it and so by doing these different types of trials it's only gonna help right and so I wanted to point point that out and then on a real simple basis just like it says on the title it's under five dollars so super cheap so you can buy in and you can get in an abundant amount of shares so it's 52 week high right for a b e o is four dollars and four cents it's 52 week low was 99 cents okay so if you look a year ago and you look in march a dollar 45 so when it was at the worst point it was at a dollar forty-five. Now there was a little bit of bearish, and it dropped to a dollar. But as you can see, it's only continued to rise. But at two dollars and forty-nine cents, that's really cheap. So when it comes to options on call, uh, calls or puts, I mean, to me, it's a no-brainer, right? I mean, you can see the volume. The um, it's got well, it's got a market cap of two hundred forty-five thousand. Um, so that's something to think about. But again, the high is four dollars and four cents, so it's almost about half the price. And I, it's been up as you can see on the chart, thirteen percent. So there's there's for that, and then for this other stock, for uh, MREO, okay, same thing. We look at a year. We look when it was in March, and you're looking at a dollar fifteen eighty five cents. And it's only rose up from there. It hasn't even dropped or gone below that, that trending line, right? So with the 52-week low at 69 cents and the 52-week high at 471, they're both under five. So they haven't broke that line yet. And so you can still get in at, at, you know, at an early stage, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So I wanted to point that out for both these stocks. Again, they're going through trials, they're doing the clinical stages, and they're doing these these tests. And so when they patent it 
or if they find that the um, the tools and the equipment that they're using works, it's gonna it's gonna spike up. <clears throat> so I want to keep keep that in mind. Tell me what you think about these two companies. Tell me if you think you're interested. Tell me, let me know if you own them. I'm curious as to who owns them and if you are buying into it and if you follow Citadel and with some of the trades that they do and you, at least now you know a little bit of that background. So if you do own it, that should help. Or if you want to buy into it, that should help as well. So again, guys, welcome to the family. Please subscribe so we can reach out to as many people as possible and again, I really do appreciate just y'all taking the time to check out these stocks and see if it's worth your time. So really do appreciate it. Thanks.